All right, well, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are heading out to the, the goat pen here to check on Lily, the mama of uh, the three the three little bucklings out here. And it's time to start to, to the, the milking process, starting to, to get her ready and get her uh, used to being milked. So we have our, uh, our goat milk stanchion here, all built from pallets a few years ago. So it was 100% uh, free, I guess, minus the screws. And I did have a couple uh, posts laying around to use as the legs. But we've got a little stool to sit on and also that they use to climb up onto the, the, the stanchion. And then this is all just made out of, uh, out of scraps. So you've got a little, uh, little feeder here for, the, for her to stick her head in. And then you kind of pinch that closed and it just keeps her head in there. And then use this block to block off the, uh, uh, the two by four in there. Or the, it's actually a piece of pallet wood and that just prevents it from from sliding closed and you can do two different sizes if you have a larger goat you can use this size and then it can go open a little bit further and if you have a really big goat you can use this size and it'll go open that far so it's just kind of a, a little multi uh, multi-use stanchion you can use for all different size goats but it's kind of built for our little dwarf Nigerians out here. So everything, I have a whole video on the build of this, but this is all stationary. The only thing that moves is just this one, uh, with this one piece of wood. And it's just uh, bolted in with a, um, with a lag bolt at the bottom there, a carriage bolt actually, with some nuts and washers. And so that can uh, just rotate on the bottom there. And that just allows them to, to climb in and, and locks their head in place. It's also perfect for trimming their hooves. We use it for that as well. So let's go check on her out there and see how she's doing. All right, Lily, you ready to be milked? <laughs> so we've got the, the three little bucklings out here. They're almost ready for sale. We'll be selling all three of these guys. Uh, within the next uh, four weeks or so, they should be ready to, to get out of here. Uh, we'll have to separate these guys out. So these these three bucklings alone will uh, will bring us in. Uh, usually having doelings is a little more profitable, but uh, part of our kind of return on investment for raising these uh, these goats is these guys will get sold and they'll kind of cover most of the feed costs for all of the goats that we have for the year. And then of course out of Lily every year we get some some goat's milk. So. Uh, she has been a pretty good producer for us in the past. We've milked her uh, uh, once or twice before, I think with two different years. The one year we didn't really do too much, but last the last time she was pregnant, we did milk her a little bit. She's a small goat, but she certainly uh, will provide us with uh, a little bit of milk. So so let's get her onto the stanchion. I have a feeling I'm a, it's going to be a little dr a bit of dragging her to the stanchion because she won't want to go. But uh, we'll, we'll get her in there and, and uh, see if this new goat milking machine will work for us. So the new milk machine has a battery pack and vacuum pump that, that comes with it. And it's this little 7 liter uh, stainless steel jar or milk collection container, uh, if you, whatever you want to call that. It's got the little uh, udder cups there that go on and all the tubing and everything comes with it. And uh, I'm really anxious to try this thing out because I hate milking by hand. Who wants to do that? Well, Lily did not want to come up to the goat milking stanchion, but we got her, we got her in here. So, so since this is the, the first time in quite a while that Lily has been milked, she's not too fond of the, 
the milk stanchion yet. She's a little nervous. Her her uh, babies are separated. They're crying for her, and uh, she's just not used to it. So she, I also have fed her already twice today, and so she's not really interested in food. But she's eating a little bit. <laughs> she's getting used to it. But uh, the more and more we get her used to this, she'll, you know, she, we've milked her in the past for a few years, and she'll jump right in here, climb right up, and start eating, and it'll be a habit for her, a routine. Um, but right now, she's a little nervous, but we're going to see if we can get this on here and uh, see if we can get some milk out of her. Uh, it looks like she's, <clears throat> she might have a little bit in here for us, uh, but the babies, there's three, she's got triplets, so there's been three babies in here, uh, you know, having their fill all day long, so... Normally what we would do with her is we would separate her from the babies uh, throughout the day um, or overnight and then we'll, we'll milk her either first thing in the morning or you know last thing at, the, at night time and then we'll reunite her with the baby so that they can get some milk uh, you know for half of the day anyway. So, uh, But we want to basically get her milk twice a day, once by the goats and once by us until the goats are old enough and then we'll milk her twice a day and, we'll, and then we'll really start to get some milk out of it. The milk that we're getting today is just going to be kind of a test and just to get her used to things. I'm not really cleaning things up. I'm not taking too much time to sanitize everything. Uh, we're just going to dump this milk. We're not going to keep it anyway. Uh, and so this is just to try out the new milk machine we got, which I'll show you here in a minute, and uh, just see uh, see if she's producing anything. <laughs> see if we got enough left in here uh, to get anything out of it. So let's see how it goes. Uh, we'll get this thing fired up and see what we can do. She's wanting to run off the, the other side of this thing here, but we'll just fire this up and see if we can keep her close. Without her falling off the edge. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, come this way. That's good. Yeah, I know. All right, so we are getting some suction here. I can see the one of them is pulsing. See, it's pulsing. So that's the the pulse feature. It actually pulses as it's suction, uh, sucking, which actually is going to help release the milk and we've got we've got a little bit coming through so once she once the milk starts to release a little bit which I see it is from both sides I'll turn the pump down just a little bit she doesn't seem to be uncomfortable or anything she's eating so wow this thing really works good that is great Yep, I turned it off, and it still has, because it still has some uh, some suction in it, but I think that's all we're going to get from her. She's she's pretty empty, though. Okay, hang on, don't step on everything, no. Okay, okay, you're, you're right, I got everything. You're done, you're done, you're done. You're done. <laughs> all right, let's, let's see if we got anything in here. Yeah, we did. Got a little bit. Not too bad, but uh, definitely proves the, the machine works well. And so, wow, I'm excited to, to have this thing. It's going to make this this whole process so much easier. Very, very cool uh, milker. I have uh, been looking for a, a good milker. We have made uh, our own DIY milkers in the past. Uh, out of you know, vacuum pumps and you know little syringe cups and stuff like that for these small goats There's not a lot of options out there. There's not a lot of really good goat milkers And so to have this is uh, is going to be such a blessing uh, We could really milk it can milk quite a few goats So I think this is I want to th say this is seven seven liters that you could put in here normally with her even in you know milking her twice a day uh, without the babies, you know, getting on her at all, we're only going to get a liter. You know, we, we usually fill up a, a mason jar or something like that. Uh, we don't get a lot of milk out of out of these little goats, but for a full size dairy goat, I mean, this is perfect for that, and even for these small ones, it's perfect. So, I was uh, happy the the cups I was afraid weren't going to fit because they they look a little big, but that pulse feature really works good. 
and uh, man, just it's it's so much better than the than the DIY goat milkers that we've made. So you'll be probably seeing this uh, quite a bit in the future, uh, in uh, future videos. So we'll be milking Lily more often here. I've said this in the past. We're not huge consumers of goat's milk. We don't we don't drink it, uh, you know, very often. When we've milked in the past, we've we've drank it, but we've usually used it in, in baking or in bread or um, you know in, in ice creams. Where we plan to do some ice creams with it and, and a lot of other things. Uh, these dwarf Nigerians, they have a pretty good milk fat. And so you can use, you know, we, I've made cheese before. Um, and so you can do a lot with goat's milk. It's a great resource for the homestead. And uh, once, these, uh, w once these goats get in milk, you can keep them going for, for quite a while uh, if you just keep milking them about twice a day. And so these babies have a, a few more weeks left with mom, and then we'll be able to really get some, some milk out of her. So. Well, let's get Lily back into her pen and let her be back with her, her kids. A lot of people when they start a homestead or are looking to get livestock, the, the question you know, becomes, what do I get? Uh, do I have pigs? Do I have cows? Do I have chickens? Do I have goats? Do I have everything? You know, what's the best thing to get? Uh, no matter what you choose, it really depends on your homestead. It really depends on the property you have and, and you know, the resources that you have available. Uh, what kind of pastures and what kind of terrain and all those kinds of things just depends on that will help you decide what kind of animals to get. But, but no matter what you do decide, goats are definitely an easy uh, animal to raise. Uh, you do have to provide them with hay, and they do require some grain. Uh, we do feed our animals grain here. Uh, when we had our large pastures on the farm, uh, we had they had a lot of free browsing area, including some brush and woodland areas and some pasture and grasses. We All summer long, we didn't actually feed them any grain. They ate purely what they got off the field. Throughout the winter time, spring and fall, we do feed them some grain and we give them hay, obviously. So, but they're very easy to care for. They require very little in the way of shelter. Just give them something to keep out of the rain. And uh, whether you want to raise them for meat or milk or both, they uh, they provide uh, great companionship for other animals, and they uh, provide you with with a great resource, which is milk and also the kids, the 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 bucklings or doelings that they'll they'll have every year are great resources for. Uh, for profit. I mean, they'll, you can sell those. There's a pretty decent market depending on what kind of goats you get. Uh, generally, we don't have too much of an issue selling, selling the goats. And so um, they're a pretty sustainable type of a resource to have. And the other thing that they produce for us is compost. Their manure uh, is just perfect. It's great. It's like rabbit manure almost. It's just really great in the garden. It breaks down very quickly and provides all kinds of nutrients for plants. And so uh, we will rake out or clean out, you know, areas, stalls, uh, things like that with the goats, and we'll, we'll throw that in the compost pile. And that, uh, that is just a great resource, probably one of the best resources or my favorite form from the goats. So, so just a quick update today on the goats and the new goat milker. Uh, of course, if you want to check it out, we'll put a link in the description over on Amazon. It's available there. They have, they've had some in stock, which I think is good. Uh, and any discounts that are available at the time, I'll put in the description as well. So you can grab one of your own. They make a cow uh, version, which is larger, and then they make the goat version, which is a little smaller. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. And of course, subscribe if this is your first time here. We'd love to have you tag around. The SSL Family Dad channel is all about uh, dad's perspective on living life uh, with, uh, with family, kids, uh, with Christian values, staying close to God throughout the way and uh, trying to do as much as we can ourselves and live a sustainable lifestyle. So love to have you tag along. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.